Hi guys, I'm Chris Green. And for February of 2025, I co-authored an article with Tony Granado about rapid shutdown and the photovoltaic feature you've never heard of. Now, what's important about this article is that rapid shutdown and photovoltaics, that's something that's part of your energy situation with all of these incidents now. If, you, if you've never done any energy training whatsoever, I would say that you have dealt with energy at some point in your career. Let's talk about some of the stuff that comes along with the photovoltaic features of a more regular modern house fire. Now, we're on the alpha side of this home right now. And as an engine might pull up for this thing for an emergency incident, you're gonna to try to catch three sides of this. One of the things you're looking at from an energy standpoint is where does the power feed come from? Now in this neighborhood, there's no overhead wires. Everything comes in from up from, from underground. But as you're rolling in on this, on this incident, now this is a dead end side over here. My expectation would be that I'm gonna pick up my Delta corner, my Alpha, and I'm gonna pick up my Bravo. Now what you'll notice on that Delta corner is that's where the energy comes in. It's also where you're most likely to see your photovoltaic safety features. And this house doesn't disappoint because they're right there. And before we move any further, I'd like to thank Jeff uh, Zintek, a retired fire captain from Phoenix Fire Department for donating his house to do this video. Let's take a look at the rapid shutdown features that are present with this home. Okay, so now we're at the Alpha Delta corner of this house. We've got all of our energy supportive infrastructure right in front of us. You noticed as you, as you pulled up, you didn't see any signs of, of photovoltaic on the rooftop. And that's simply because that was the northern face of the home. So my expectation is your panels will be back on the Charlie side of this thing because that's what faces south. But I don't need to see those on the rooftop to know that I'm dealing with some sort of alternative energy source. Now, as complicated as this is, and believe me, this is a complicated setup for an R3. The indications are here. I've got red labeling here that says rapid shutdown. I've got signs here that say solar photovoltaic. There's a lot of indicators here that are telling me that I've got an alternative energy source, that being photovoltaic here with the home. Now, if I'm doing my 360, before I move past this, I'm gonna go ahead and open up these knife switches. I know that there's four and there's a lot of them. You may not completely understand them, but these are a way to stabilize that energy platform before you move past these things. And what's important about starting on that, on that alpha delta corner in this situation is you pick up the energy hazard indicators at the outset of the incident. That's when you're gonna be able to make things the best for companies that are coming in is to stabilize that right away. So take note of these things. Don't be afraid to open up these isolation switches. There's not going to hurt anything. And what they're gonna help do is activate rapid shutdown if it's in place and isolate the power for the photovoltaic system to the rooftop and behind the inverter here. This is some stuff that you can do when you're starting your 360 on a home. We don't have to look at these energy hazards anymore and just admire them from afar and talk about how scary they are. You can actually take action. Now this home being a modern home, I know that this stuff was put in past the 2017 NEC. If you've read the article, you'll see the safety features after the, the, the 2017 NEC were very robust and really defined how well these systems were gonna work for the future. I think it's important to understand that, that, that the modernization of rapid shutdown in the NEC really hit its stride in 2017 and further. That was an important uh, uh, milestone for rapid shutdown. And it much better reflected what the fire service was championing when they got the language in initially in 2014. So again, refer back to the article to see why I keep mentioning the 2017 code and newer and how important that was for rapid shutdown because all of that is in play here. Now we're at the front entrance to Jeff's house and something interesting is at that front entrance that we don't see on a lot of homes and that's a, an emergency disconnect plunge device. Kind of like this one that you might have seen at a gas station and things like that. Well, now these things are starting to be seen at residential homes. And I think it's important that we understand what they represent and what they do for us. They're significant. They're an energy hazard indicator, right? That you've got some sort of alternative energy. That's why this is here. Activating this switch isn't gonna make things worse for the incident. If you've got an active fire in something like this, activate that. Let's talk about what that might represent. When you read the article uh, for, for February, as well as read, go ahead and read the article for July of 2024 about photovoltaics, we talked about the, the, 
the number of, of battery energy storage systems that are now associated with photovoltaic rooftop systems. Now, today in the US, 15% of the photovoltaic rooftop systems have got some sort of battery energy storage device with that address. Now, what makes that number significant is that five years ago, it was less than 1%. So this is something that's on the rise. Now, this plunge device is meant for the battery energy storage in the garage. So it is not a two part plunge. You don't get both rapid shutdown as well as isolating battery energy storage to the garage. But when I see this setup independent of any of the rapid shutdown uh, devices or the meter or anything like that, I see that standalone. I'm thinking battery energy storage in the garage. My first indicator that I've got battery energy storage is really gonna be the photovoltaic that's with the house. But to see a plunge device, a standalone like this, that's a big clue that you've got those device, you've got batteries inside the garage. And let's go ahead and look around the front side of this garage because it doesn't disappoint. Sure enough, on the inside, we've got a Tesla power wall. This Tesla power wall is very much powered by the photovoltaic rooftop on the southward slope of this home. So you can see that just with a little bit of energy ac acumen for a modern fire ground at an R3, you can understand this stuff and you can affect change. So when you see those plunge devices, when you see those knife switches that are associated with the photovoltaic system and the rapid shutdown features, know that they're there to help you. This rapid shutdown was championed by fire service personnel like Matt Pace over 15 years ago. He was championing these causes. And by 2014, you saw rapid shutdown enter the NEC and it's evolved incrementally over time. But unfortunately, most of the fire service is completely unaware of how rapid shutdown works and what these devices are that they're coming across on these modern homes. I think it's important that we start investing in real energy hazard for training for the fire service and stop seeing it as extra credit. It needs to be part of a baseline firefighter development pro program. Okay, guys. We've changed locations. We're literally at Jeff's neighbor's house right next door. He's got a bit of a different system. He doesn't have battery energy storage inside the garage, but what they do have is a photovoltaic system that's on the home. Like Jeff's home, it's on the southern facing slope. So if your engine is pulling in from the northern side, you may not pick up any panels, but you know what you will see? You'll see the energy collection right here. And these are your energy hazard indicators right here. And you've got dual metering going with two meters. And again, if you've read the article from July, you'll understand what dual metering means for you. Um, you've got good labeling where it says solar PV system equipped with rapid shutdown. For me, because of the age of this home and what I'm seeing here, this is a post 2017 system, which is very good for the fire service. This is a system that as you do your 360, you're going to want to activate rapid shutdown. Now, some of this can be done with knife switches, but this being a much more traditional system, your rapid shutdown initiation device is traditional. It's gonna be a dial. You're gonna move it from the off on position to the off position. That will activate rapid shutdown and begin the safety, the safety features for the rooftop. This is something you should be doing before you send people to the rooftop to cut holes and things like that. It should be compulsory before you start overhaul procedures. Having our members get shocked during overhaul is unacceptable. And this is one way to help prevent that. Okay, we're back. We've switched locations. We're now on the Charlie side of Jeff's house. And we've got Jeff Sintek with us here. Um, one of the questions I get asked is, can you get shocked by these panels under like normal conditions? If you just bump into them and touch them and they're not, you know, they haven't been damaged by fire or anything like that. Um, the answer to that is no, uh, but, but Jeff, you know, Jeff works around these things from time to time. And Jeff, you were cleaning these the other day. I was, I was cleaning them because they get more efficient when you get, get them cleaned. Um, no problem with uh, getting a shock or anything of that nature. Now, in the summertime, they're extremely hot, so they can be hot to the touch, but for the most part, very safe up there. Okay, so you do get more efficiency when you keep them clean. How often do you have to clean these things? Well, 
At this point, I, this has nothing to do with the fire service. We're just talking turkey and money. What did we do? I just cleaned them uh, probably a month ago, and I already noticed that it looked kind of dirty. But it only takes about an hour and a half. I'm going to put it on my schedule for probably you know three or four times a year. Okay, perfect. And it doesn't take very long. So no shock. You can't touch these things again. We've got uh, we've got the former Phoenix fire captain Jeff. Zentec proof. He's dealt with these for a while. Uh, one of the other interesting things about these things is most of the time when you're dealing with these things, they're an afterthought. The house has already been built and then they bring these things on. One way you know that for sure that these are these are like an afterthought is that the conduit wire, the conduit chaseways and stuff, they're going to be external, meaning they're on the, mounted on the outside of the home. The upside to that is that they're very easy for rooftop operations to see because you don't want to cut through that conduit because that's where all your electrical hazards and wiring and things like that are going to be. I'd like to thank all of you for, for reading the article. Um, if you see Tony Granato, please thank him. Uh, it was a fun article to write. It's been a fun video to put together. Uh, and mostly I want to thank you for making energy hazard training a priority for you and your fire department. Thanks again.